So this week, we're going to discuss more about the biometry, especially the statistic. What is the statistic? And why the statistic or biometry is very important in scientific research. After that, we're going to learn more about the different data type that we collect from biological entities. Then after that, we're going to learn how to organize and then summarize the data. So after this lecture, you should be able to describe the importance of statistic and experiment, experimental design in scientific research and differentiate different biological data types, formulate different types of research questions, organize the data in a correct data format for, science, for research questions, and then produce different graphs to summarize different types of data which depend on different research questions. So this is the content of today's lectures. So we're going to go through it one by one. So first, we're going to discuss about the scientific method and also the statistics. So the name of this course is Biometry and Experimental Design. So we focus on this word biometry. So if you you might heard about biometry before and you also heard about biostatistic. Actually, this means the same thing. So biostatistic is a statistic that apply to biological problem. Then the next question is, what is a statistic? So the statistic is not actually exactly the mathematics. So it's not the mathematical formula that you would use to calculate something. Okay. But it's more a uh, approach that we use to when we analyze an interpretation of data. So we use the statistic to analyze and then interpret the data. Okay, so that we will have a more objective evaluations. Okay, on the conclusion that we make based on the data. So this is a definition okay, or the concept of statistic and the reason why we need statistic. And statistic is commonly used in science, especially. Okay, and we need to look at the science. What is a science? So the science is a system, systematic enterprise that build and organize knowledge in the form of testable explanations. So the statistic is very useful when we want to test an explanation or test an hypothesis. So the science is a is an enterprise that we build and organize knowledge. So to build and organize knowledge, we use a method Okay, what we call the scientific method. So the method that we use to build and organize the knowledge in science. So actually the scientific knowledge, uh, scientific method is quite common in our daily life. Usually the scientific method start with an observation. And then from the observation, we could ask a questions. And then we want to look for the answer. So in this case, we might need to do a lot of the reading from literature and it is possible that we could find the answer for the questions that explain the phenomena or the, the our observations and sometimes we could not find the answer or the answer is not uh, sufficient so in this case we will formulate a hypothesis so the hypothesis is a number of different expected explanations and after that based on the hypo hypothesis we formulate a research objective and starting from here we will design our experiment po after that perform research procedures to collect data after we collect the data we manage our data and then do the data analysis after we analyze our data we will get the result and then based on the result, we can we can check whether our result 
So usually it's based on the statistical test. Okay. Support the hypothesis or not support the hypothesis, does not support the hypothesis. In, in either case, we're going to communicate the result. So we have to report the result. Okay, what is our answer for our research questions? So this procedure is, is a scientific method, regardless whether you are in biology, chemistry, as long as you are in the science enterprise, you're going to use this method to construct the knowledge. In the data analysis, Okay, statistics is one of the tools that we use very commonly by biologists. There's a few reasons. First is there's no two biological entities are strictly identical, even the twins. So just imagine now if you there's a pill which the uh, factory claim that can reduce your body weight by 10%. So if you give the pill to 40 people and then after they consume the pills you you can imagine that not all of the 40 people their weight will reduce by 10 percent some of them might reduce by 10 9 percent some of them might be reduced by 11 percent okay and most of them reduce by 10 percent so there's a variations the variation is caused by the biological variations because there's no two biological entity are strictly the same so biological entity are more complex than chemist, chemical and physical entities. So that's the reason why we need a steady state for us to analyze and also interpret our data towards the objective evolution of our conclusion. So in biology, the straightforward interpretation is rare. So we need to depend on steady state to help us to, to assess the reliability of our conclusions. So after discuss the biometry, the next is experiment design. So we're not going to discuss this topic in detail in this lecture. We're going to discuss this in the next few weeks. So in the experiment design, we have frequently heard about the factors, treatments, experimental unit, and response variable. So for example, if I want to know is there any differences in the body height between male and female students, so what I want to know is difference in body height. So this is measurement in CM between male and female student. So in this case, my experiment design, okay, I can explain the factor that I want to investigate is gender okay, because I want to investigate between male and female and the treatment or group is for the gender I have two group or two treatments which is female and male for experiment unit in each of this group or treatment so in this case I have five student of male female student and five male student okay so each student are different I have different student ID And then for each experiment unit, I will measure the response variable, okay, to check whether there's a difference between treatment, between group. In this case, I want to investigate is there any difference in the body height between the two groups, which is male and female. So in this case, the response variable is body height. Okay. In addition to this element in the experiment design, we also need to consider the randomization, how we select a student. Is it randomly? The control, if you want to compare to the, the effect of some drug, for example, and also the replication. How many replicates that we need for each of these treatment or factor? So this we are going to discuss in detail in the next few lectures, especially in the ANOVA lectures. So most of the fundamental statistical concept and used in research were developed in the late 19th century and 20th century. So it started when Fisher published two books, 
okay. One is about the statistical method for research worker. Another one is design of the experiment. So before Fisher, uh, most of the biological research done in 18th century or 17th century, they do not really use the statistic to analyze the data. They do collect the data and also present it in the form of table or graph, but they rarely statistical use to, to assess the conclusion they made based on the data. So the best way to learn statistic and experiment design is by doing a research. So in this course, we're going to fo focus on this part of the scientific method, which is starting from the formula research crash objective, design experiment, collect your data, data management, how to organize and summarize data, data analysis, also interpretation of result. So this course, all your assignment, your, your research questions should be related to your daily life and your experiment unit need to be your classmate student so you can measure any variables depend on your research questions for each assignment you will learn how to differentiate different biological data type based on your research questions organize your data and also produce the graph